Okay, so I'm going to talk a bit around the work of a personalised care institute in England, uh, which Emma is the National Clinical Director for and really helps to guide the Personalised Care Institute from a clinical pers perspective. In, in some of my other work, I've been very closely involved in it, so I feel sort of very confident around talking about their work. I'm really sort of uh, sorry that we haven't got em Emma's recording, but we were floored by a basic thing around sort of password access. Uh, at, at the last minute, but that is some of the problems with the world of digital, I'm afraid. So I'm going to talk a little bit around personalised care and the work of a personalised care institute to support personalised care. Personalised care really sits between sort of paternalism and, and cons consumerism, from the consumerism, I want, I demand, I should have, it's my right, to paternalism, and I guess what we would describe as the uh, traditional paternalistic uh, way of how health and care can sometimes be provided. So personalised care really supports the uh, autonomy of a person, supports them to make decisions about their health and care in partnership with healthcare provider. And with that is a sort of power shift from people feeling disempowered to being equal partners. This is particularly so where people, where their care and uh, the services are ac accessing, they are highly dependent on those services, such as, say, uh, kidney dialysis. I mean, know there is good evidence of effectiveness and uh, meets the preferences of the um, individual. So how does personalised care support empowerment? Well, it's one of the five major practical changes that the NHS is implementing, and it's around shared decision-making. So making decisions are being understanding the, the treatment options available and then making decisions about those so the patient's experience is brought together with a clinician's knowledge around the evidence and effectiveness enabling choice enabling people to choose where their care is provided and how it's provided we've mentioned community quite a lot already so it's connecting to help and support in people's uh, community through social prescribing using approaches such as health coaching and supportive self-management to enable patients and their families to develop their, their levels of health literacy or to build up their knowledge skills and confidence in managing their health personalized care support plans so designing people co-designing their care and support plans and also which is very specific to England around enabling people to have a personal health budget so that they can actually purchase some services direct such as a customized wheelchair so that they can employ carers directly and, and this sort of thing. So those are the sort of key different in, in components. However one of the things we rarely recognize is we, we talk about three areas so one prepared public so to what extent do people have a health literacy to engage Engage, and that's very much what, what Christine has picked up upon and also what previous speakers have, have mentioned around intervention to support, but also to ensure that systems are health literate and are able to support people. The focus of a personalised care institute is very much on trained teams. So ensuring that clinicians and people working in health and care actually have the skills and the ability to be able to support and use the five different sort of key tools for key shifts of personalised care. So I think there's an issue here with all of these tools and all of these approaches that unless the teams themselves have the necessary skills to be able to have those conversations, they are but a, a tool which is not always put to very good use. So I'm not going to go into this because I think health literacy has already been picked up. Uh, however, that uh, it is absolutely crucial to everything. So therefore, ensuring that our clinical teams actually have the skills to be able to engage with people at all levels of health literacy, as many of our services are designed around one particular segment of the population, which tends to be the more affluent, the, the more vocal, and those with higher health literacy. So having the skills to engage at all levels is absolutely key. We know we've got issues around, you know, so some of the skills we look at where the Personal Care Institute was set up to provide is tailoring conversations depending on people's and individuals' understandings, avoiding reliance on written information, and trying to, you know, avoid mixing up different types of st statistics. I mean, many of us are really confused quite often, particularly around sort of stories in the media where you'll hear something like, you know, such and such a drug 
doubles your chance of uh, getting cancer or something else cuts or you know drinking free glasses your or wine increases your risk of uh, dementia by you know 10 percent and this sort of thing a lot of these statistics and a lot of way they use is incredibly confusing so doubling your risk well if your risk originally was one in a million doubling that to two in a million is not not a huge difference but if your ri original risk was a one in two chance of being affected by something doubling that that's pretty pretty major so you know so how we communicate uh, health information statistics is absolutely key and we also know that I mean, this, this says patients, but in actual fact, we know that clinicians also do this. So we tend to overestimate the benefit of treatment and underestimate the potential harm. And we know quite often that therefore where clinicians have had the right training and the skills to actually engage in conversations around the treatment options, and have an honest conversation around the potential outcomes, including not doing anything at all, we know that people are then more, more engaged with the course of action taken and also more satisfied with the outcome as well. There's some quite worrying statistics that show quite a high percentage of patients who say had a knee replacements actually did not fully understand the potential limitations that surgery might have on some of the things which were important to them and that if they'd had a better quality conversation they might have been more likely to have engaged in say looking at weight reduction or improving activity and other sort of lifestyle approaches rather than going straight straight for, for surgery and this is where patient decision-making aids uh, are rarely useful, where the evidence of the different interventions are set out in a language which is very clear to un understand um, and helps people to sort of have those conversations. Personalised care approaches, we know that they improve quality of care patient outcomes and across the whole area and are key to creating the shift that Alf Collins was talking about and others have mentioned as well. And we also know that what we get from back from the workforce that when they're trained in skills which support health literacy and trained in conversations based around what matters to the individual or trained in approaches such as a, a positive health which was being talked about earlier as well we know that they actually have greater job satisfaction as well and have more satisfying conversations so they feel that they're getting back to the role that they were trained to so my personalised care institute was set up specifically to provide quality assured evidence based training to the health and care staff uh, within England. So do this by providing education. So there's a whole range of training on offer. So there's e-learning, which is uh, free to access. Uh, this e-learning in shared decision-making, personal care and support planning, core skills, is designed to not pe make people an expert, but designed to get people to think that maybe there's more to this than that they realize. Podcasts, webinars, and also the Personalised Care Institute accredits skills training for healthcare professionals in these approaches. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, SEMPAC has been accredited through this uh, process. What it also does is provide accredited training for key roles within the NHS which underpin this. So care coordinators, health and wellbeing coaches and social prescribing link workers. And these are three roles which have been introduced to the NHS specifically to provide the psychosocial su support to, to people. So freeing up clinicians to really focus on the, their expertise ar around treatment and making decisions about treatment. And then so these three roles very much work around supporting people around lifestyle change, uh, dealing with issues such as uh, loneliness, uh, social isolation, poor housing, and these other things, which we know really sort of uh, impact as well. So if you want to find out more, please go along to the Personalised Care Institute website. There's also a national peer development programme as well, which really looks at developing peer leaders to, to have the skills to engage uh, too. So lo lots of resources there, uh, well worth a look. And I'll also just take a moment to plug uh, some of our own resources on, on the SEMPAC website as well to, to design to support this sort of thing. So um, 
So I hope that was a useful uh, overview of the Personalised Care Institute and the work going on in the NHS in England around this area. Um, and a huge thank you to Emma who actually developed all of the, these, these slides. So, so thank you very much. <laughs>